Hi everybody, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge and I'd like to welcome you to this YouTube video. In this video I'm going to show you how to make my flexi glue. This is a, a glue I developed specifically to use with my new flexi paste in collaboration with Sugar In. Now this uh, flexi glue enables you to, when you make sugar flowers especially, or dress figures and other things that you can use the flexi paste for, what it means is the glue will stay flexible along with the petals. In traditional flower making, I have always used egg white. A lot of cake artists or sugar flower artists use uh, edible glue. But the thing with egg white and edible glue, when they dry, they actually become hard. So if you have a flexible petal, for example here, bringing in, uh, showing you like a rose. So this rose is made with my flexi paste. And as you can see, it has flexibility. So especially on like, say, the outer petals of the rose, when we come and dust this rose, because the paste stays flexible for well over three weeks, um, if you have just made the rose and a few hours later want to color it, which is totally fine to do, what will happen is the paste is flexible. So if you have uh, used egg white or edible glue, what will happen is if you put too much pressure on there, the petals are just going to sort of break away from the glue. So the sort of contact is just going to sort of obviously uh, not work. The flexi glue is made specifically to use with my flexi paste. In enabling your glue to stay flexible with the flowers. And so especially with flowers, it's mostly really important for flowers like say roses here, when you do flowers like say Gerber daisies, you know, any of that sort of family where they're a little spiky, all right? Because you know, this, this flower was made several, actually several months ago, but the petals are still flexible. And then flowers like say gardenias here, you can see here. So in, again, you can see here on the gardenia, if we had used egg white here, and because, because the petal is still flexible, what would happen is if you put too much pressure, it's just going to break off. It's not going to snap, but what's gonna happen is the glue would just come um, unglued. And so that's where the flexi glue comes in really useful. Now, um, this is in collaboration with um, obviously a, a, the actual download. So if you go to nicholaslodge.com and you click on recipes and templates, uh, you actually have a printable PDF recipe there to follow as well. Now this glue, um, I'm showing you just the sort of the quantity I normally make, but you could double this recipe. Um, and also the other thing with the glue is if you want to make it a little runnier, you could just add extra water. If you wanted to make it thicker, you could actually just start off with more of the um, the flexi paste uh, in the base of the, the product. So um, recipe I'm suggesting, and we're gonna start off with six grams, okay, of the flexi paste. Now, this is my uh, white flexi paste. This is the 400 gram pack. This also comes in a 200 gram pack as well. Um, also, it comes in colors in a 200 gram pack. So check out my other video because I have another YouTube video on using the flexi paste, showing how to roll it, uh, how to cut with it, how to store with it, and all different other little tips I'm gonna share with you. But this video is specifically showing you how to make the glue. So, so we're gonna take six grams. So using a small digital scale, and those of you that are familiar with my flower making methods, I use the size guide. So this size guide here, um, alternatively you can also use a number 10 size on the size guide, okay? But uh, most of you should have a digital scale. And uh, so we're gonna take the paste here, and obviously just gonna take out some of the paste, and we're just going to measure off six grams of paste. So there we go, so that's nearly there. So just six grams, all right, so six grams of paste. And as I said, on the size guide, so on my size guide here, this would be like number 10 size, so about one third below, two thirds above, okay? And that is how we would measure the paste. Now I'm going to use um, a microwave, all right? And also what I've done is I'm going to use a little bowl. Now um, I'm using a silicone bowl uh, because this silicone bowl is actually then easy to hold. You can almost like grip it a little bit when I'm stirring this because I'm going to really use the same foundation as we would use in cooking for making a roux, making like a bechamel sauce, making obviously um, a white sauce where you're going to take, a, or when you thicken a stew or a soup, when you take cornstarch or corn flour, you add water to it and then you add that into then you bring it to the boil. So we're using to thicken it up, using the same sort of, uh, as I said, principles as that. So anyway, so I'm gonna take my six grams of my paste and I'm just gonna flatten it, okay? 
I'm just going to put it in the bottom of the bowl here. And then I'm going to take some um, hot water. Now, in your recipe download, you can either take water straight out of the, the tap. Um, my particular tap here at my school is the water is very hot. Um, you can also just microwave some water or you also can take a tea kettle. It doesn't have to be boiling water, but just hot water, okay? So um, I actually uh, used a tea kettle, electric tea kettle, and I did that about 15 minutes ago. So obviously I brought it to the boil, but also if you're microwaving or using a tea kettle, just as it starts to come to the boil, you can just switch it off. Anyway, so I'm going to take some of that water and I'm going to put some into, just into a little container here. So I've got some of that ready for the next step. And I'm going to take a, um, a half a teaspoon, which is 2.5 mils. If you don't have a half teaspoon, but you have a full teaspoon measure, just take one of those, because what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put about half a teaspoon in, we're gonna microwave it for 10 seconds, stir it, then add another half a teaspoon, okay? But if you have a half teaspoon measure, okay? So we're gonna take the half teaspoon of the hot water, I'm going to pop this in and I'm going to pop this into my microwave. Now, my microwave I'm using here, um, um, I've got obviously a start, a 30 second option in here. So what I'm doing is that I'm just going to put it onto the 30 seconds and I'm just going to put it in there for 10 seconds. All right. And uh, so then obviously, or just count down from a minute, but a lot of microwaves have the, there we go. All right. So now I've got that for 10, 10 seconds here. All right. So what that's done is actually sort of softened the paste here. And uh, so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my little spatula here. I'm just going to use my little spatula and I'm just going to squash this little palette knife or a spatula because I've softened the paste as well. Plus the water is hot. What this is going to do is going to just soften this down. All right. So you're just going to just going to blend this like this. Okay. And then once you sort of get the water integrated into this, just going to pop it onto my table and I'm just going to use my palette knife or my spatula. Alternatively, you could also use, uh, for example, like a bench scraper. You could use that and just sort of obviously, but I found a little palette knife. It works really well. But so I'm just going to just, as you can see, I'm just blending this in. So what I'm doing here is I'm just sort of softening this down. So I'm almost making, as I said, a bit like a sort of a, in uh, cooking like a roux because this is a starch based paste okay so just gonna just gonna blend that in and then once we've done that I'm gonna put it back into this bowl here just going to just gonna clean off my and you can use like a smaller I use my little mini palette knife here but like a little mini palette life like this is I use a lot in cake decorating and for things like that, but it's not really strong enough to do the initial mixing with that. I was going to just clean up my station. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add another half teaspoon of water. Now, the reason I do it like this is that if you put the whole teaspoon of water in, the mixture is going to be very soft, so it's not so easy to paddle on the table. So another half teaspoon of water. And you see, because this mixture is softer, we can obviously mix this up very easily. But of course, as I said at the beginning in the introduction, you can do a double recipe if you want to. But this goes, uh, goes a long way. And you could use this, of course, for flour making, but also if you're using the flexi paste, which is a wonderful paste because of it staying flexible. And plus you can get it so fine uh, when you're dressing figures. So those of you that do like figure modeling, uh, when you're dressing figures and things. You see, now I'm just gonna mix this up. The little flex, little silicone bowls are good because you know you can actually sort of hold them. It's a little bit easier than a sort of bowl that's gonna slip around. All right, so you're just going to just mix this up. So you see how you have almost like a royal icing consistency. If you do use lose like a little drop of water, don't worry too much about it because it's not it's not really really precise recipe. And uh, so now what we're going to do is going to take uh, 50 mils or um, half a, a quarter of a cup or two fluid ounces. So obviously you know there's many options here, but you're just going to measure off like 50 mils. Or as I said, that would be the same as you can see. This is obviously a U.S. measure cup, so quarter of a cup or two fluid ounces. And I'm going to take some more of my water here. I'm just going to take my 
So let's say this is hot, but it doesn't have to be boiling, okay? And uh, so you've got your hot water, and then what we're going to do, we're going to actually change out now to a little whisk. Okay, so we're going to just change out to a little small whisk, and I'm going to just add a little bit of water at a time. And then with my whisk, I'm just going to give this a mix up. Okay, so you're just going to add just a little bit at a time here. So you usually do this in about five, about five hits, okay? So you're just going to continue mixing this. And if you have any little tiny lumps, don't worry about it because we're going to be actually straining this at the end. And this is going to be my third. I said it's a little bit like when we make a use corn flour or corn starch to thicken, say, a stew or a soup or something or a dish. You know, you take a little bit of your corn flour, corn starch, you only add a little bit of water, a little bit of milk to it, make a thick paste, then slowly add some more to it. So it's the same here. All right, and then once you get to that point, you can just uh, now just mix this up. The other thing with this uh, glue, which is very uh, convenient, is with you is making flowers with egg white, you have to be really careful because if you get egg white, for example, like on a petal, like a little splash of it, with using egg white, what happens, it dries shiny, like almost like a shellac or a varnish. So that means when you come to dust the flowers or airbrush them or whatever technique you're using, you're going to get little areas where the color won't stick. Uh, this glue will dry just the same as the paste because really it's like a watered down version of it. Um, so as I said, it works very, very well because you can dust over the top. All right, so now we've got to this point, we're going to put this into a microwave safe bowl. So both of these, of course, containers, the silicone is microwave safe as well. Okay, and then we're going to, and then because I've got my, um, I have my, uh, obviously, microwave, obviously, I use 10 seconds of the 30 second feature. So, you know, if you're setting it for a minute, just set it for a minute after 10 seconds, take it out, but don't cancel it because then you're going to put it back in. So now we're going to just going to go back in for another 20 seconds. All right, we're going to take it out. We're going to give it a good whisk and then we're going to microwave it for another 30 seconds. Now what's going to happen in the second 30 seconds is going to boil the mixture. And so as you know, like in baking and cooking especially, you know, when you obviously bring something to a boil that's got a cornstarch base in it or roux, what it's going to do is going to thicken the product. So it's going to take this out. And then we're just going to give it a good stir. I'm just going to make sure everything is incorporated into here. All right, and then I'm going to go back into my microwave for another 30 seconds. Okay, and that is the paste. Now, as far as storage of the paste, um, generally when I'm making flowers, I use, this is what I use in my classroom. Uh, this is a little small like food service container. This is actually a uh, three ounce size one, so about a 75 mil size one, and um, but just a little container. And then what I do is I have a hole in this and I have a little rubber stopper. So when I'm making sugar flowers, what I do is I can keep the lid on, take the rubber stopper out, and then I'll show you in a second in my finished one. Uh, you can then use that for your wire and your glue and then pop the rubber stopper back in. So see, this is now boiled, so it's actually thickened it, so a bit like a custard. So you can see how it's actually sort of thickened the product, just like a custard. I'm going to give it a good stir. You said you will have some little lumps in here because obviously the cornstarch, the little tiny pieces are actually going to, to thicken, but that is, that is fine. That's normal. So it's going to give it a little stir. Obviously, just get rid of the what you can off of there. Go. So now we're going to take a small uh, tea strainer. Uh, generally sort of something that's, uh, you know, I use sometimes conical strainers, but I'm just using a little flat tea strainer. Tea strainer, the advantage of this over a regular sort of kitchen sieve is that it's going to be a little bit finer, okay? Um, so what you do there is you put this over the top of your, you know, little bowl, whichever one you want to use. And I'm going to take just a little spatula here, and I'm just going to pour that into the, into the tea strainer. You see, it's almost just looks a bit like a white, 
like if you were making like a custard and you're just going to get this mixture just scrape that all out okay and then what i'm going to do here is i'm using a rubber spatula i'm just going to start to stir this this is going to come going to come through the All right, so that's your pretty much your glue, your glue there. You can see it's quite it's quite thick at this stage, so it's almost just a little bit like I said, like a cooked custard. All right, and so you're just gonna just give that a stir. I'm just gonna put my lid on here. Just gonna put my lid on. We'll put it in a little container with a lid. But you see, when I'm using, uh, this is something I made yesterday, so when I'm using, uh, as I said, wires or paintbrush, see, I just take my little plunger out, and then when I'm making sugar flowers, what I do is take my paintbrush, and then I can just go into there and just use the rim to get rid of the excess egg, and then brush that onto my petal. And when I'm making things like petals, like a... For example, um, when I make individually wired petals for orchids or leaves or things, I can take my wire and I dip my wire into there and again just pull off the excess glue and insert that into the petal or the leaf. And then when my students or when I finish, just give that a wipe. We pop the little plunger back into here and then this just can be stored at room temperature. Because the paste has got um, preservative in it, uh, you don't have to refrigerate this, so that's another advantage because a lot of edible glues you have to refrigerate, and of course egg white as well. So this is obviously just keep it ambient room temperature. Um, and this is your, as I said, flexi glue. Um, so this is wonderful to use, remember, for flower making, but also when you're using this to attach, obviously, uh, decorations if you're doing cakes or cookies or whatever, and you're using anything like that. But you remember, you can make this thicker by using, you could use, you know, seven or eight grams of the paste, uh, the flexi paste in the glue. Or if you found it was a little bit thick for your project, you can also add just a little bit of water to it and just mix that through. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on using my flexi paste in collaboration with Sugarin, and we'll have fun using this for your flower making and other projects. Till next time, sweet wishes, this has been Chef Nicholas Lodge, bye.